The snare drum is important to the overall sound of the track. You'll hear many engineers and producers talk about how important the sound of the snare is in defining the overall sound of the track, not just the drum sound. So for example, on a rock track, we might expect to hear a certain type of snare sound and on a funk track, we might hear something different. So no amount of EQ will go to fixing a bad snare sound. So we really need to make sure that the snare has been recorded to the uh, best possible uh, capability and, and that we've spent time with the drummer making sure that we've got a good sound on recording. So let's have a quick listen to this snare sound. I'm going to solo it. I've already gated it, otherwise we might hear kick drum and the, the, the other sounds of the kit, but you can hear that it's just the snare sound, so it's being gated. And I'm going to use my same approach. I'm going to load up the standard Logic EQ and have a look at it using my analyzer. And we can see that the fundamental frequency is around about 200 hertz. We're now getting into the range of fundamental frequencies for a lot of instruments, so we've got to be careful. We don't want to be over-hyping all frequencies uh, of every instrument we hear around this area because it'll become very muddy. So it's not always advisable to boost around here too much. And now when we record snare, I sometimes use EQ on the record path so that the EQ gets recorded. But then we generally apply a little bit more EQ after it's been recorded as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of EQ somewhere. I'm going to add a little bit here and I might just use two bands and add a little bit there so I get a sort of two peaks and again I'm using quite wide Q factors I can of course narrow them if I need to or widen them and I'm not going to take any mids out but I'm going to use a high pass filter on quite a steep slope and get rid of some of the low end so let's have a listen to that so bypass You can hear that it's uh, making the snare sound a little bit tighter, a little bit brighter, but I can hear a sort of a tightness coming out. So I'm just going to adjust my frequency bands a little bit. I'm going to leave that there and try again. And now let's hear it in the mix with and without the EQ. very subtle EQ. I'm not sure if I need that band. I might need a little bit more of this. I might need to make it a bit wider. Let's try it again. So the difference is quite subtle, but I don't want to start overhyping it. at this stage anyway so I'm going to leave a subtle EQ in and leave it like this again if I wanted to I could copy the snare to a new track and apply different types of EQ or indeed I could try using a different EQ than the one that I'm using so maybe use the uh, vintage console EQ 
and do the same thing as I did earlier so add a little bit of uh, three four hundred four uh, 4k and maybe a little bit of the fundamental frequency bypass the other EQ and have a listen So the difference is subtle, but uh, at this stage, I'm going to leave that like it is. I'm not. It doesn't really need too much EQ. You can hear that it's been quite well recorded and and it has everything that I need need it to have. So I'm going to leave that as it is. But that's basically how I would go about EQing a snare. 